What part of Pakistan are you guys from? So if you Google the name of our city, um, it's actually known as Karachi. And uh, it's one of the uh, most populated city in the world. And if you Google Karachi, uh, it will turn out to be one of the most dangerous cities uh, that we have in Pakistan. So we belong to the most dangerous cities of Pakistan because there's a lot of political unrest and um, uh, not just only political unrest, but in, in terms of social injustice. And uh, law and order situation is pretty bad in our city. So I'll talk wow. about more about it when we actually start. Is it started yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're still... oh, okay, okay. <laughs> it's a very laid back okay. format. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But yeah, yeah, man. Oh. Uh, really, really cool stuff. And it's just like so interesting. And there must be plenty of lyrical inspirations, you know, because I feel yeah. like thrash is a very political genre. And just from hearing that alone, uh, and it really makes sense because you guys do have a lot of political um, lyrics. Uh, so what was your, have you lived there like your whole life? Yeah. So me and my bassist and vocalist, we were actually born here in Karachi and um, we're, we're actually proud of the place that we're, uh, you know, like uh, where we belong to, because I say this in all of my interviews and all of the interviews that we've done in the past that, Every day living in Karachi is an inspiration for us because uh, all of the political unrest that you see, all of the things that you see here in the society, that is actually an inspiration for us to just get back home and write uh, whatever that we feel and uh, go through all of the day. You know, it's 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 the law and order situation is, re is so bad here in Pakistan and in generally in Karachi uh, that if we are going to our offices because I work five days a week. My other uh, band members also work five days a week. We fund the band on our own financially, put everything on our own. There's no one in Pakistan or in general record labels to support our music uh, and metal music in general because metal music is supposed to be um, music that a lot of people don't hear and uh, they're more into pop. Uh, and and rock music in general but they don't appreciate metal music so we we do tend to get a lot of hate and uh, and this is one of the reasons that we actually put all of our music on um, uh, youtube and all of the streaming platforms that you see because uh, we cannot play our music or our music videos in the on the national uh, tv channels that are available here in pakistan uh, because there's no support as such so as I say that our inspirations generally come from the everyday things that we generally see and we face. I'll tell you a little story about it because a lot of people actually ask us that where is your drummer? <laughs> uh, where, where is the drummer? Yes, we're a two-piece band, but we have uh, a session drummer uh, that plays um, uh, for us, uh, specifically in our recordings, uh, new album as well. But um, recording a music video, and specifically if you're talking about thrash metal music videos, right? So we're there banging our heads and performing our lives out. But we we uh, get to see a lot of um, um, unrest and um, a lot of hate from the people that are actually seeing us head bang and putting out all of the energy that we're doing in those certain music videos. And the reason that we don't use drums or in general the drummer in our video is that drums is a very expensive piece of equipment, right? And if we're putting, because uh, we shoot the music videos on our own, we finance and budget everything on our own. I edit the music videos myself. I'm an editor as well. Cool. So so in, in the last video that we shot, uh, which was Obsidian, and it got over like three three hundred thousand views on Facebook. Um, so in that video, we had a drummer, we had the drum kit, but a lot of people came uh, came up to us and actually stopped recording because they were not in the favor of uh, you know just uh, putting up drums and just just generally not in the the favor of um, playing music in general. So there's a lot of um, hate and you may say there's a lot of religious fanatics that actually come to us and stop what we're trying to do. Wow. But when we're, we're not going to stop <laughs> because we we love what we do. So that's wow. not going to stop us. 
Yeah, I think I saw it in an interview you did or something where you were talking about the like recording uh, um one of your music videos and people were like chasing you and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like that's insane. That has happened. Yeah, that has happened because I as I told you that the law and order situation is pretty bad and uh, if we if we're shooting a music video then obviously we we make sure that um, uh, because again uh, we we're, we're very limited on our budget right we i have a guitar i haven't really updated my guitar in the last 10 plus years because there are no music shops available here as well so yeah there's uh, there's a lot of unrest that happens but again as i said that uh, that just pushes us to do music more and write all of these things and tell people that in all of these struggles and challenges that you face, right, there's still hope for metal music. And that's what we strive to do. So, so amazing to hear. Um, now, what was your introduction to metal music in general? Like, what was your first exposure? Yeah, so my uh, first exposure, I, I actually started with the uh, death metal. Um, ah. I was a huge um, Cannibal Corpse fan. So I started playing uh, guitars when I was 14 and I was exposed to death metal music and I was like, what, what is this music? And uh, then I um, started exploring death and Chuck Schneider was a huge inspiration for, for both of us actually. And uh, then I got into thrash metal uh, and it was just because of one album that is actually on my back patch as well. Uh, which which actually changed and um, changed my life entirely, which was Kill Em All and uh, the, fir the this first Megadeth album. So I listened to that and I was like, this is the music that I want to play. But it's not like that. I don't like the other um, forms of metal. I love black metal. Uh, I've been um, recently hearing a lot of... Um, uh, 80s, 90s, 80s rock. Dio is a huge inspiration for us as well. Uh, so we hear a lot of bands, but uh, our main inspirations include uh, the Teutonic thrash metal bands as well, like Destruction, Creator. So you may hear a lot of um, the, the vocals that we have. So the music is generally inspired from all of these classic Bay Area thrash metal bands, like the legendary bands that we have, Slayer, Megadeth, and um, Metallica and uh, anthrax uh, but the vocals are are more inspired from the teutonic thrash metal band so you'll hear a lot of schmeyer in daniel's vocals <laughs> that's awesome you can totally hear the destruction-esque vocals and all like that's so interesting how into the the german bands like i, I think you have a sodom patch if i can remember yeah. um yeah yeah, yeah sodom, big fan man big fan. <laughs> hell yeah man uh so so what was it like the internet where you, you like discovered these bands like for the first time? Cause you hear all these stories where people, you know, they'll go to the record store, they'll find, you know, a cover. They'll be like, Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to get into this band. So was it all internet for you? Cause I can't imagine yeah. there were record stores or any music shops. Yeah, nothing, nothing. There's, there's nothing um, here in Pakistan that can, you know, just generally just, uh, uh, expose you to all of these big giants, right? Um, I, I, um, I'll tell you the truth. To be very honest, I heard this Queen Switch song that I thought was an Iron Maiden song, and then after like ten fucking years, I realized that it was an <laughs> Iron Maiden song. So that's what happens here in uh, in uh, in our country. But I. Uh, yeah, internet was again a blessing for me. And uh, what we, what I used to do was because again piracy in Pakistan and there's there's no laws as such in specifically related to piracy. Wow. So um, I still remember that I used to download music and hear music in in my university years and my school time, college time, and uh, then got exposed to different genres of metal as well. Not only just trash, but heavy as I said, um, black uh, from the old school rock as well. I love Deep Purple. I'm into Led Zeppelin as well. So, so and 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 uh, and uh, to to be to be very honest, the the patches that you see on our jackets, right? There's the pre those pretty cool jackets that we wear. We wear it as a <laughs> uniform, right? It took me like four years to build that fucking jacket wow. because I have some friends 
uh, that are in living in different countries, right? So I so they uh, visit their relatives and family. So what I used to tell them that just bring me metal patches. It's been me this patch and I want to put it on my jacket. So yeah, so that's how the story is actually. Wow. So how the band form? So we, uh, so the band was actually formed back in 2010 and it was uh, formed by me and uh, some of the other band members that were included. And uh, we started out the, the in, in 2010, the music scene was much better uh, because uh, the in general, the political situations was, were, were made much better if you compare it to uh, uh, these uh, years, right? So it was way much better. Concerts were happening as well. So we we actually formed the band back in 2010. And then um, in uh, 2014, after 2014, we after 2013, actually, we realized that, yes, we're playing covers. But I think it's very important that we put out our original music and make sure that people actually listen to uh, metal music and uh, specifically represent Pakistan in uh, in thrash metal music scene. And uh, for that purpose, we self-recorded every single thing on our own. I joined a lot of Facebook groups, learned production on my own, audio production on my own, and we recorded the album. And it's, it's a very funny story, but I recorded the album in just like... Uh, Literally like five dollars or ten dollars, because we wanted our music to just get out, right? Yeah. That's that's crazy, man. That's crazy, but but we recorded that album and we had the virtual drums and everything, and uh, uh, we released our debut album back in twenty fourteen. It was almost like eleven eleven songs, eleven songs at that time. You had an and EP it was too. Greatly appreciated. Yeah, yeah, and the EP too in uh, twenty twelve as well. Fatwa. So we recorded that and we got so much great feedback, not just uh, only from uh, uh, the metalheads, but everyone in generally in, in Pakistan, they when they actually listened, because a lot of people, I I, I, I believe only, only like 1% or 2% of the people that hear metal music here in Pakistan, they actually appreciated the music and the album and the songs that we did, right? And that actually inspired them uh, to you know just build their career in metal as well so we inspired a lot of other bands uh, but as uh, the situation went pretty worse because 2014 was that time in Pakistan where suicide bombings were happening every single uh, day or every single week and 100 people were losing their lives uh, in those suicide bombings. So the situation was pretty bad uh, uh, from 2014 till 2016. And uh, I just, I recently graduated because um, I, I had the responsibility of my parents because we live in a, we, we call it Desi <laughs> because we live <laughs> in a very, because you're put in a lot of responsibilities um, and, uh, you know, just, you just have to excel in your own career. So I had like, long hair just like you because when when i saw you i was like like i had really cool long hair oh, but yeah, i had man. to cut it because i had to go corporate and you know make money and i was responsible for my uh, just to make ends meet for my family as well so we took that certain break and i know it was pretty long but um after almost like nine years i'm pretty excited because i think covid 19 was I know it was not a blessing for anyone, everyone else, but it was a blessing for us because we were working from home and uh, I called in Daniel and we, you know, just recorded a bunch of songs and, and almost around 22 plus songs uh, we recorded. And um, now we had, we were in a better financial place as well. Uh, so I had the knowledge, I had the better financial resources. So we got, got in good equipment and recorded everything in this room, by the way. <laughs> this is my bedroom, <laughs> nice. actually. And wow. um, the response has been pretty good, man. The response has been pretty good. We're, we're, we've released around uh, almost around six singles. And the album is coming out um, in uh, in October. So I'm pretty, pretty excited for it. And hopefully, hopefully you, you guys will all like the album because we put our heart and soul into it. Very, very exciting. Uh, now, you were talking about, you know, starting with doing covers and stuff. Do you remember yeah. like the first live show you did? How yeah. how did that go? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> it, 
well <laughs> it, it's a long story but i think it went pretty well and i remember okay. that we prepared like uh, three to four songs cover songs we did a metallica medley as usual because we we lo- used to love metallica at that certain time and then uh, i remember this one song that we did and the crowd went crazy wild <laughs> crazy <laughs> wild and that song was uh, actually by um, iron maiden ace is high and uh, the ace is high cover that we did and it was more of a thrash metal cover because it's a fast paced song and everyone went wild so uh, the 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 first performance went pretty good but uh, to be very honest we haven't really played in the last 12 years can you actually believe wow. it wow damn what so it's been like 12 years uh why why is that yeah. uh so there's a lot of reasons specifically related to that because uh, in pakistan uh, yes there are a lot of concerts that are, that happen uh, usually but um, in general there's no support for metal music and you know how metal mm. heads are right yeah. you know the the chaos that we bring right the energy that we bring so the the problem is that that when we whenever we we are um, hoping to uh, do a concert we don't get permission uh, for doing a metal concert here in in pakistan so that's one of the main reasons and the other thing is that um, obviously if we're doing a concert then we have to fund everything on our own so i think that's where the the, the problem happens obviously nowadays i believe that um, in general pakistan and the Kara- karachi the city that we live in um has a lot of uh, has less uh, metal fans so we we can expect a crowd of like 10 15 people right and uh, they're all yes they will bang to us but most of them would be pulling our legs right there are a lot of concerts <laughs> that i remember uh, they they you know just uh, talk to the sound guy and they were like okay just pull down the knob of the guitars pull down the so there's a lot of things wow. that political shit that happens here in our country and in general in Karachi so we 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 uh, we, uh, we were never demonetized in general just because of this shit that happens here but uh, we we look the opportunity of actually performing not just in our country because we know that there is no going to there's there's no one that is actually going to understand our music right so we got a lot of opportunities uh, from um, um, the G- the GCC region and there's a lot of interest from Europe as well uh, so oh. we're hoping we're hoping that once we release our album we would love to play live in front of an actual audience, a metal audience that actually appreciates our music rather than just pulling our legs, right? Yeah. Wow. I have so much respect for you guys because there's so many hurdles in these like 12 or whatever years and since uh, 2010 and you guys are still making it happen. That's why it's great being in like the fourth wave of thrash metal right now because you have the internet. You know, where if it was the yeah. 80s, you know, you really wouldn't have any of these uh, tools. Exactly. Uh, how important do you find streaming to be with you guys? And like this whole Internet wave, you were saying earlier with Facebook, but I feel like you guys have such a, a way more like global audience now because of streaming. Yeah. Um, yeah. Take me through like kind of your journey with uh, like Spotify and Apple Music. Like how how has that been to you? I think in uh, in general, all of these streaming platforms that we we're, we're on right now, we're we're on Spotify, we're on all of the major streaming platforms like Apple Music and every everywhere else as well. I think that's been a blessing because um, in a city like Pakistan, and in general, if you talk, if I if I represent Pakistan, they're like, oh, Pakistan and a metal band. Are you serious? Because a lot of people recognize because we're all brown. We we call ourselves brown people, right? So a lot of people confuse us with India, but we're not Indians. We're we're Pakistanis, right? So a lot of people confuse us with that. But uh, in general, the streaming services, and I think uh, in um, uh, the 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 Facebook thing that actually I I talked about earlier, right? So. Uh, the music videos that um, we make that actually got viral on Facebook, and that m- made a lot of people go through our previous albums as well, which were also released on Spotify and Apple Music. So, 
they knew that we were the actual OGs of thrash metal here in Pakistan because uh, we've been doing music for the last 20, uh, almost like 10 plus years now. So streaming, I don't think that if, if the streaming platforms were not there, we, 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 we would not have been discovered. And uh, I believe that um, not just streaming platform, but I, I think when, when two of our videos actually went viral, a lot of people, we, we, all of our songs are actually listed on Bandcamp for free. Uh, because I don't want, you know, just in general, because if we're, if we're, if anyone uh, is buying a track on Bandcamp, on Tabahi's Bandcamp, right, the money is not going to be here in Pakistan because the PayPal is not available. And all of the uh, payment platforms are not available here in Pakistan. So we're not going to get the money. Yeah. But but these metalheads, these fans, they just buy the track. And uh, they, they're like, okay, we're just going to support you in any way possible because you guys are doing a really good job and you have a story that um, uh, a lot of people can resonate with and uh, make real, really good metal music. Yeah. Wow. So are you guys like the only thrash band in pakistan wow are there any other like metal bands at all really so so there there were a few metal bands uh, that uh, started back in 2014 but uh, and there were uh, the the bands that i'm talking about they they used to do just covers you know just uh, you know like uh, lambo god ripoffs we used to call them lambo god ripoffs <laughs> But uh, there's this band that um, uh, we're, we're uh, currently uh, working with and uh, we're, uh, and they re recently released their album as well. It's called Azab and uh, it's based in Islamabad. So they mm. also released uh, their album, um, I think, six months ago. So they're doing pretty good. So we're the only active band here in, pa in, here in our city. But uh, I, I think I know just one other band which I talked about, Azab. That is uh, that has released their album, but there's no certain uh, metal band that is active here in Pakistan. Wow. So one of my early questions was I was curious about the the scene there, but I, it looks like they're really it's just you. Is it <laughs> <Guys>. just you? <laughs> so to buy, you know, Brendan, Brendan, uh, j just generally, you know, like so I start I started with metal music, but I was you know like a nobody. Uh, and and that outsider that you just you know how metalheads are right yeah uh, they're considered an outsider because you listen to screams you listen to that certain kind of music so I I think there there are a lot of people that listen to music but they don't want to come out uh, they don't want to say that I I like this music because uh, in this society in general it's not accepted the music is not accepted. Uh, you know, like you can see me right now. I have a very corporate job. So my life, uh, five days a week, I, I'm very corporate. So a lot of people get surprised that I play this music and uh, I completely stand by it no matter whatever they do. And in general, in, in, during music in Pakistan, that has led us to a lot of, um, you know, just security problems. In general, we've been threatened uh, wow. by a lot of people. Uh, here in Karachi that you don't you don't uh, just generally because our music and and and, and the lyrics that we have they're you know like um, um, based on social injustice and politics as well one of our songs is actually called politics so we got a lot of so in, in general there's there's uh, no freedom of expression in Pakistan in Karachi so that's the problem that we generally get but I think, um, as I said, that uh, when, when, whenever we post our videos, whenever we post any updates on our Instagram, on our Facebook, we get in so many comments, we get in so many messages from all over the world. That's the best part. And that's the thing that I, I enjoy seeing and I love seeing because that's where our hard work, you know, just it just goes away and we're like, okay, we're going to do music. We're going to do it for them and tell our story. Yeah. And it's so awesome to hear. And that's why I'm, I'm so happy to have you on because the, the metal community is so tight and close. Yeah. Um, so the more support, the better. And that's why I loved like, you know, to give you guys this platform and just to learn more about the band. Uh, uh, now the, the band name Tabai, uh, is that a destruction reference? Yeah. 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 You got it right. It's an, it's an, <laughs> 
So tabai is an Urdu language word which actually okay. means destruction. Literally means destruction. Yeah, that's so awesome. Now you have the the new record Thrash for Justice, right? Which is coming out October sixth. Uh, um, now, what was the writing recording process for that record? Well, um, uh, so we we used to record different bits and pieces here and there because uh, we didn't had a proper setup, um, and um, we figured out that if we, because in a twenty fourteen album the feedback because I make sure and the other band members make sure that whatever feedback that we get we make sure that we deliver on that constructive criticism or that constructive feedback that we got. So in 2014, we had limited resources. Like, I wouldn't say limited, but we had zero resources <laughs> to actually make that album, right? Uh -huh. So what we the album is pretty good, but it lacked some, uh, it lacked good audio production. So my goal for this album, the new album that is releasing right now, Thrash for Justice, my goal for this album was that uh, the uh, audio production has to be uh, the best standards. It has to be, I had to make sure that all of the other bands that we're listening to, like we're really big fans of Havoc, we're big fans of Warbringer, right? So we made sure that our production goal actually reaches those uh, songs. And the, the moment you hear a Havoc song, the moment you hear a Tabai song, there's no certain uh, disparity in the production style. So we spent a lot of time, I spent generally, I specifically spent a lot of time in actually learning uh, audio production, mixing, wow. mastering, everything on my own. Because if I go to a, a an uh, audio recording studio and I say that I want to record a metal song, they're like, okay, just go out. <laughs> just leave. Get out of here. <laughs> we're, we're, yeah, just get out of here. We're not going to listen. We're just not going to listen to this piece of crap that you guys are saying. Uh, and the, the you guys are making so but there's no appreciation and they don't understand what our production goal is right so i learned everything on my own and the recording process actually lasted for almost uh six to eight months and uh so our recording process and in general writing process is a bit different what we tend to do is we record everything like we layer down the drums guitars and everything on the composition um in a, in in a song first and then we put in the vocals i think it's 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 a very different approach but it works the best for us because uh, as i said that we're um, both uh, we both work 5 days a week so i think um, in general uh, we recorded that in 6 to 8 months and then um, the the main part was mixing and mastering the whole album and I did that on my own, just by wow. tuning my ear, making sure that everything, wherever the metalheads hear that song, everything is perfect and finalized for them. So I'm just generally just really excited and just very excited for the album. And I'm really excited to share the album with you as well. Hell yeah, man. I'm so, I'm very excited. Uh, what did you use? Like Pro Tools? Yeah, so I used um, uh, Cubase and um, we don't have those, you know, like uh, the processes that you get or the uh, mm -hmm. distorted pedals that you get. You cannot buy those here. So I used um, different VST instruments uh, and figured out a tone. Wow. <laughs> Just generally on my own and uh, recorded everything on our own. So, uh, and the drums were actually uh, uh, first sequenced and then recorded into another studio. And wow. we did that in my, this room. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, that's cool that we're uh, shooting this in, in the room too. So, so it's on a uh, CDN records. Yeah. So how do you get signed to that label? So CDN uh, actually reached out to us when uh, our second song went viral, which was uh, Run For Your Life. And we actually wanted someone to uh, help us with the distribution. Uh, so we're signed with them, but it's specifically, the contract is specifically related to distribution only. And the other distribution partner that we have, which is ReArts, they're digitally releasing our album on all the major streaming platforms. But uh, to tell you the truth, we're not getting anything out of it. Uh, mm. But our, our goal in journal is just, our goal was 
uh, that again, um, whatever that we're making in this room, <laughs> whatever <laughs> that we're doing in this room, where we want this music to be um, uh, heard across uh, the the world and um, unite metalheads all together. Because I think in general, music has no language, right? And metalheads in general, it's such an amazing supportive community that, uh, you know, like if we're given any chance, we would definitely uh, know how would, how best we could actually serve them. That's so awesome. Now, what's the best way as we wrap up here? What's the best way for fans to keep in touch with everything you're doing? Yeah, so first, first and foremost, I would highly recommend that you check our music videos because we spent a lot of time in actually making those music videos and there were a lot of struggles and challenges that we faced in uh, actually shooting those music videos so i would definitely recommend that you go on our youtube uh, go on youtube and search for tabahi thrash then you'll see all of the music videos over there and I would definitely suggest that you like the video and also comment on the video because that's how the unfortunately the YouTube algorithm works. Because the more comments that you get, then it get recommended. It gets recommended to uh, your channels, uh, the, the 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 feed that you're in. And also, um, we're on all of the major streaming platforms that I mentioned: Apple, Spotify. Just search the buy. You'll find uh, the buy everywhere. We're also on Bandcamp, so if you're willing to support us on Bandcamp, uh, tabai.bandcamp.com. And if you uh, want to uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, we go by Tabai Thrash, so you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And we're also on Twitter, but we don't use Twitter as such. <laughs> Cool. Will you guys ever have, uh, do you have like any physical media, like uh, CDs or anything? Yeah, could people yeah, buy so those? We actually made one one prototype, and this is the only prototype that we have. So, uh, all the physical CDs will actually be available on uh, CDN Records, cdnrecords.com, and uh, you can buy your physical copy over there. And hopefully, you'll be able to get it by in October. Hopefully, so this is the album that we have. This is a pretty cool artwork that that we've made. Very awesome. And uh, let me show you the insights. Look at that. So, yeah. Awesome. Wow. So everything that you see over here, it's all designed by me. <laughs> we do everything on our own. As as everything. <laughs> well, uh, this has been awesome. Thank you so much, man, for doing this. This was a ton of fun. Thanks, Brandon. Thank you so much for uh, hearing uh, our thoughts. And uh, thank you for this opportunity. And uh, good luck to you and uh, everyone who's watching. Please support the Bahi. That's the only thing that we would want from you guys. So keep loving metal. Keep loving Thrash Metal. Thank you. Thrash for Justice is out in October. Uh, this has been awesome. My name is Brandon Baddock, and this is Disturbing the Priest. Uh -huh.